I know I've made the flippant remark, but I've discovered and learnt sometimes I make a flippant joke and or I think something's witty and connects with something. I then discover that actually that God is actually using that. So it is 2020. Amen. And we know this gets used in having 2020 vision. Okay, clearer eyesight apparently. Uh, most of us wear glasses or contact lenses, which is interesting. But we're not talking about physical 2020. We're talking on a spiritual level. And I made this uh, to another uh, church, uh, a couple of church leaders recently. And they actually turned around and said, wow, I hadn't even thought about that. That it is 2020 and having 2020 vision. Because they knew they heard God saying to them, you know, this is a year maybe for clearer spiritual viewing of God and life. So they got the whole 2020 vision bit. So let me just talk from um, some of you. If you was at the New Year's Eve, you would have heard some of this at New Year's Eve, but not all of it. But I want to read from Joel uh, chapter 2, just for a moment. And bizarrely enough, I think it was Carol over Daniel started talking about the... the Lord restoring what the locusts have taken away. She was quoting from Joel uh, chapter 2. But we're going to quote this. Then after doing all these things, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. And your young men will see visions. In those days, I will pour out my spirit even on servants, men and women alike. And I will cause wonders in heavens and on earth, blood and fire and columns and smoke. The sun will become dark and the moon will turn blood red. Before that day, great and terrible day of the Lord arrives. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. For some on Mount Zion and Jerusalem escape, just as the Lord has said, those will be among the survivors whom the Lord has called. Joel chapter, 22, uh, Joel chapter 2 is God talking about pouring out and the promise of his Holy Spirit pouring about on all people. In a time of restoration, in a time when really it did look rather bleak that God was calling on judgment upon people, on his people Israel, but also saying in the future I will pour out my spirit on all people. And we're in that time now, amen? And he's saying you'll dream dreams and young men will see visions. This is about seeing things more clearly, and all people can see things more clearly because of what God is going to do. And I, I touched on this last week as well, and I'm going to touch on it again. This is a time, I think, for us this year, maybe as a church, for us to consider seeing Christ more clearly in our lives, to seeing a better vision of him. This is not all about spiritual gifts. We all have spiritual gifts. But this is more about us seeing God more clearly. Um, John uh, twent, uh, chapter 20, verse 20 says, the disciples were glad to see Jesus. Um, so I stole that from Pastor Yemi, who used it on New Year's Eve. And I went, oh, I like that. I'll nick that for today. That they were glad to see Jesus. Maybe this is a year that we should start learning to be glad to see Jesus. Now, that might sound really weird, but if we're really honest with ourselves, how glad are we to spend time with Jesus? Very glad. Very glad. Some are really glad. Do you take time out to spend time to see Jesus? Okay, how much time do you take? Sorry, just to pick on you and Bernie, Lorna and Bernie, I'm going to pick on them slightly here. How much time would you roughly? Every day. Every day? Every day. Yeah. Oh, well, see, so you're topping one now in your Lorna, and she's going at night. If we're honest and do an honest assessment, how much time we spend with Jesus and want to spend time with him, that's the a glad to want to spend time with him. If we're really honest with ourselves, how much time is that really? It's, not, it's a rhetorical question. Think for yourself. Think about how Monday to Friday you wake up and, and, and you genuinely set the day off thinking, I want to spend time with Jesus today. I'm going to take time out carve time out to spend 
with my Lord. And spending time with our Lord, I'm not talking about, yeah, hi, morning, Jesus, breakfast. Actually deciding I'm going to spend time sitting with my Lord. Not with a shopping list of things that you want, but actually spending time with him. Now, if your answer is really honest with yourself right now, and you sit there and you go, yeah, it's not actually that long. When you really work it back, um, I, I think a good idea, I had somebody come and see me a few months ago and said, I just don't have time for this, 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 and this. And I said, do me a favor. I said, do a timesheet. Do a timesheet of your week. Actually putting down in your week, this is somebody with a full-time job, but actually do a timesheet of exactly how your week is being spent. This wasn't about nagging them about spending time with God. This was them just saying they constantly feel busy. Okay? And, and they were um, laying, um, uh, not blame, well, you blame, but I don't mean that in a bad way, but they were laying uh, where they think they were spending their time. Does that make sense? And, and whom with and who they were covering for. So they did their timesheet. So I met up with them a week later. I said, how did it go? They went, well, I wasn't spending the time with the person that I th as much as I thought I was. So when they broke down their timesheet, and, and I'm not declaring their timesheet to you, but it, it was actually when they realized the reality of where their time was being spent... It wasn't where they thought it was. Does that make sense? So it could be like for all of us. I, I would suggest doing a timesheet for the next two weeks and actually asking yourself, where am I spending my time? Now, Alandra, I'm talking do literally everything from, from the minute you wake up to how many times did you hit the snooze button before you physically got out of bed? No, is that just me? I've got a really annoying, I've got a snooze button that goes eight minutes, not four. It's really irritating because I want to hit it twice. I can't. It makes it 16 minutes long then. So you get up, you go, I mean, we all work. We all, most of us have work. Most of us have things we have to do. But when you pin down actually how much time, how many people actually spend time listening to the radio first thing in the morning while they're making their cup of tea? And it's not necessarily premier radio. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying, how many times actually stick the TV on the minute they get downstairs? Must watch the news. Must find out what happened last night. Yeah? And then what we find ourselves doing is spending an hour watching the same news on BBC News and the same thing over and over and over again. Because it's the headlines. Break down the headlines. 15 minutes later, it's Carol Kirkwood with the weather for two minutes. And then it's back into headlines, maybe a little bit of an interview. Then it's at 26 minutes past the hour. It's immediately, and we're now going to take you to the news where you are. And you see the London news, bang. By half past seven, you're back into the headlines on the BBC News. You go back round at, at, uh, at 47 minutes past the hour. Carol Quirk would be again giving you the news, uh, giving you the weather. Exactly, the weather hasn't changed. The weather has not changed. Okay? I know this country, it can change from morning to noon. But it, trust me, it doesn't change that much in, 27, in, in half an hour. And then it's straight back to the London news where you are, which is exactly the same news that it was half an hour ago. And this is the funniest thing with all this, though, is that sometimes, I don't know, with the London news, normally on the main news, it's normally something that's happening in London anyway. So actually, you've already heard it anyway. You can see what most of my mornings look like. <laughs> And then how long do you take to get ready to go out to work? Or go out shopping? That, that's the next thing. Put that in your timesheet. How long do you spend getting yourself washed and dressed? Men, how long does it take you to slap the makeup on? Make sure we've got all the aftershave on correctly, just in the right spots. I don't use aftershave, I'm just... 
And then eventually, right, I'll now go to work. Now, some of you might jump in cars or you, you take public transport. Plug your, your, your headphones into your ear holes. And what are you listening to, really? Some people are doing worship. That's brilliant. Not necessarily of God. And then you go to work and you spend all day at work. And, and I get all of that, or college, or, or whatever. And it'll clearly, if you can't work because you're on disability or whatever else, you know, what else are you doing in that day? Then you come home, and yes, we must all eat again, mustn't we? So dinner must be cooked. And then we sit down, and then we think, right, what am I going to do now? Shall I listen? Shall I read a book? Shall I watch TV? And then when you add up how many hours you might read a non-Christian book, or nothing wrong with non-Christian books, hear me very carefully, but, you know, it's how much time we spend on them. How much time do you spend watching TV? I'm sure it's only half an hour a night, isn't it? Anyway, this is not a nag because we all have habits and we get into these habits and sometimes we have to break the habit. The question happens to be, how glad are you to spend time with Jesus? And if you're more glad to spend time watching the goggle box than you are watch, spending time with Jesus, then, then sometimes we have to think, oh, I wonder what? Now, there's nothing wrong in watching programs. Please hear me carefully. But everything in moderation. I could quite happily binge watch. I could, believe you me, I could. I could binge watch just about, not to say about anything, that's not strictly true. But I could binge watch science fiction like it's coming out of my ears. Okay, there's a new uh, set of series on Netflix called, uh, on Amazon Prime called The Expanse. I love it. Yeah, Tunde? The Expanse, it's brilliant. Are you on season four yet, man? I'm on episode four at the moment. I'm doing really well. Um, Oh, I could just sit there and just, just let it keep playing. That's it. I want to sit to the end of the season. But that's just not good. That's not healthy. It's not healthy for me. It's not healthy for me spiritually. Are you glad spending time with Jesus? And spending time with him is like almost like the TV. I don't know about you. Do you interact with your TV really well? How's the communication with your TV? You talk to the TV and it talks back to you, yeah? It's really good, isn't it? I mean, amazing. I communicate and I go, ah, oh, Lord Sony. May my free view channels come up really well. I wish to now actually hear from you clearly into my life right now. And you want to randomly select the channel on your free view and, and, and see what's going to happen. Like you would do, I want to hear from you, Lord, and just randomly open your Bible. Now, there are times that God talks to us when we do that. There's times that he doesn't. We randomly open our Bible and go, I don't want to read 1 Chronicles, thanks very much. But the TV doesn't talk back to you, does it? But guess what we do with TV? We sit there, or a book, but I'm not nagging everything. I'm not, it's not just TV. But we do just sit there and we just take it in. Yeah? Yeah? I hate to tell you this, even certain Christian channels, we just take in without really questioning what's being said. I just rest that there. Somebody very recently has admitted they finally had their eyes open to the fact that that goes on. So, but we just take it in, don't we? What's going on on the TV, yeah? So here's the next thing. Who spent time with Jesus just taking him in? How glad are you just to sit there without a shopping list and take him in? Encountering Jesus and taking him in. Because he wants to output so much more than what a Freeview TV does. And guess what? He costs nothing. 
He doesn't cost seven ninety nine a month for Netflix, or whatever version you have, or Amazon eighty pound a year, or eight ninety nine or seven ninety nine a month, or Sky is the other one, isn't it? I've no idea much. How much is Sky a month for all the sports channels and all that? Nobody's going to declare that out because they want to. They have to admit they're on Sky. But the whole point being, you, you, do you see what I mean? With Jesus, he wants to download and, and give you everything in one hit. He wants to give you all the 2020 vision you need this year without you having to do anything other than spending time with him. Being glad to spend time with him. Encountering Jesus. So I would ask you maybe to look at the way you spend your time. Maybe do a timesheet. Not, not to condemn yourself, not to have a go at yourself, but to actually have living reality about how much time we really do spend with God. I could go through the whole of the Bible here, and I could go through all of the New Testament, but um, it fascinates me when you really think about this, that, that Jesus, on the day that he got baptized, what did he go and do? He got baptized, what's the first thing he did? Went and spent time with his father. He then came back for a day, did a bit of day's work. Do you know what he did immediately after that? Went and spent time with his father. Jesus spent more time with the father than he did actually doing his ministry. So if our Lord Jesus needs to encounter God, how much more do we need to encounter him? And the funniest thing was that Jesus did it because he was glad to spend time with his father. And we should be glad to spend time with our Lord. So how can we do that? Maybe there's some things that you might need to do. Like, may I humbly suggest giving more attention to Bible reading this year on a daily basis. It's not condemning a uh, sermon. This is, it's not actually, because I think half of our problems, our problems are created by the fact we don't spend enough time with God. We don't spend enough time discovering what he thinks about us. We don't spend enough time seeing clearly who he is and who we are in him. So if you want 2020 spiritual vision this year, best thing to do, spend time with him. And he primarily does talk through his word. I know we would like to try and find a more modern version of not having to read the Bible, but he does spend more primarily time talking to us through his written word. How you do it is up to you. You can open up this old-fashioned thing called papyrus. It's commonly known as paper to the rest of us. And you could read this thing called ink. It's a bit old-fashioned. But you're more than welcome to it. It's done people well for a few thousand years. And do you know what? If you drop this into the toilet, you can dry out the pages easy. Doesn't cost you 200 quid for a new phone. You can use the, your mobile app telephone with your... I've got no problem with it. You can read off of that as well if you wish. I know there's some fundamentalists who somehow think it's not reading the Bible. Yes, it is. It's a screen. It has the Bible on it. You can also press, if you want to, play on those apps. So I've discovered when I was decorating the house once and decided to leave the Bible just being read to me via the phone. It works really wonders. I can't remember anything that went in because I was concentrating on the painting. But I'm sure something went in. But you can, you can press play and have it read to you. And there are some people that need it read to them. And that's fine. Either way, God talks primarily through his word. And when it says, you know, test the spirits, where do you go and test the spirits? If you think you've heard something spiritually from God, you have to go back to his word. And you test it with others as well, by the way. I, I keep trying to say this. Don't test it on your own with God and the word. Actually ask other fellow brothers or sisters in Christ, I think I've heard God say this. What do you think? So maybe give some more attention to reading your Bible every day. I love the fact that at the beginning of December last year, Belinda challenged us all to read a chapter of the Gospel of Luke every day. I won't ask you to put your hands up if you did it or not. 
Maybe read at least one Christian book a, day, uh, a month. Might be worth a try. I, I'm just trying to give you some suggestions how we can encounter Jesus because he talks through his word as well. Maybe look for an extra way of learning or new way of learning or being with Jesus in a different way. Maybe join a home group or a Bible study group as we call them here. We've got currently three on the go and I'm sure we want to expand them as well. So maybe join the Bible study group this year. Challenge yourself. It's nothing better than actually having lively discussion with others in a group, even people who may you may disagree with. It's okay to do so. Um, if you do, um, is Mar I can't see Margaret. Is she here? Oh, there she is. Could you stand up, Margaret? Sajajit, could you stand up, please? Barbara, could you stand up? Because it's at Barbara's home. Though we're not going to say Barbara leads it because the whole group lead it. We all lead it. Is there any other group that I'm missing in my head? I don't think I am. Not yet. So here we are so far, our three leaders who do two, one on a Wednesday every other week and every Tuesday what Margaret does at the moment. So maybe you might be interested in joining one of them. Give them a round of applause for just standing up. In our home group, which meets at Barbara's home, it, 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 it's really peaceful. We, we get along really well. We never, never argue over something. There's never controversy. And we laugh genuinely all the way through it, don't we? We all get along and we just laugh our ways through it. And there's always some in humor. And you, eventually you, you become very tribal. You, you sort of sit and you go, I agree with so-and-so and so-and-so. And, -so. and the other person, I agree with so-and-so. And then you find you're on both sides of the argument. It's quite funny. I'm always very neutral. <laughs> Not. But it's good laugh. Sajid, what's it like at yours? <laughs> well said, sir. <laughs> Margaret, good? I hear good things from yours, so it's brilliant. Don't go to Sajidjits. He clearly is lying. <laughs> it's cool. Uh, we're also going to trial here, by the way, every third Sunday. Every third Sunday. Because in reality, we look at people's diaries. Not everybody can make a Sunday morning. Okay? People work. People have more than one job. Uh, 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 my wife, you'll notice, is not here today. She, she's got to work today. So, you know, people aren't work for the NHS. They have to work on Sundays. And other jobs as well. I'm, I'm just throwing it out there. Um, some people really have had a late night the night before and just really can't be bothered to get up in the morning. Because they've been up watching TV. Moving on. Or they've been partying. But genuinely, there's some people who really just cannot make Sunday mornings. This is, you know, our Sunday mornings is born out of the farming rural arena. That's why we meet on Sunday mornings. So, third Sunday of every month, we're going to trial meeting here at five o'clock in the afternoon. For about an hour, hour and a half, you know, service. It's going to be done slightly different. So it's not going to be like, if you've been to our sort of encounter evenings, or, or it's not going to be that. It's going to be like a, inverted commas, proper church service. But I mean that, inverted commas. Because there are parents who can't make it, and their youth can't make it, because they have sports clubs and things like that happen on the Sunday. And that's just part of our modern society. So partly we have to cater for that. So we're going to try that. So that's the third Sunday every month at five o'clock. You might want to come to that. You can spend more time with God. Don't panic. The sermon is not going to go on as long as this one is. It'll be a 10-minute short thing. It's been discovered, actually, I think the Church of England has discovered in London that people actually come along for a quick 45 minute every Thursday. Uh, and most Church of England have started to do this because, in, mainly in London, but because straight after, people need that 45-minute time out with God. They realize their lives are too busy, and they need to take that time out to spend with God. We already thought about doing it, and then this report came out. So, it, so we beat the Church of England. No, joking. Joke, 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 joke. So maybe you want to spend more time to do that. 
giving more time talking to God and allowing him to talk to you. It's commonly known as prayer. You want to encounter Jesus. We want to be glad to encounter him. We have to take the time out. Make more opportunities to pray for other Christians. The other thing I want to talk about is not just encountering God, but we need to encounter each other this year. We need to encounter each other in love this year. We as a church body, we need to spend more time with each other. What I mean by that is actually genuinely encountering that we're doing okay. Not the, how are you, I'm fine, and that's it. But actually listening to God, is this person doing all right? Now, sometimes people are doing absolutely okay. Normal life is going on, but they're okay. Hopefully, we're all going to be okay because we're spending more time with Jesus. So we're realizing who we are. So we are doing slightly better. I think some of our emotional stuff is because we're not spending more time with God. We listen to what Netflix tells us who we are, what the BBC tells us who we are, not listening to what God tells us who we are. Anyway, but spending more time with each other, encountering each other. So part of that five o'clock thinking, by the way, on the Sunday afternoon, is you might, after the service, go, do you know something? Do you fancy going for a quick cup of tea? Or do you want to come back to my house? Or do you want to just spend some time here? Do you know what I mean? That, that part of that thinking is it's that early to allow for people to have space to spend time together or recognising you might need to go and get set up for school and work the next day. But develop that time of encountering more time with each other. You might want to this year set aside some time for prayer retreats or quiet days. They're good things. They are good things. To, to, you know, there are some local Christian retreats um, uh, in, in the area within, within an hour's drive. There are actually some on the train into London. You might want to go and just spend some time. You know, some of these don't cost a lot of money. They, some are free. Some will say, look, whatever you can give, just give. Some might cost you £25 for the day and you get a decent lunch as well. But it's good to take some time out to spend time with God. Scrap the mobile phone for eight hours. You can live without it. You lived without it up until ten years ago. You can live without it now. Do you know it's only been around for ten years? In, in the smartphone, in the format that we have of a smartphone, it's only been around for 10 years. And yet it feels like our lives are wrapped around it like it's, we were born with it. Anyway, because this is all about trying to encourage you to spend time with God. Uh, maybe we need to rely on God more in our battles against temptation. Don't give in without a fight. When you're tempted, don't just go, oh, well, here I am again. Pray about it. Don't give in. Fight back. Refuse to let it win. Spend more time with God. Seek to discover and develop your spiritual gifts in serving Christ in the church. That goes without saying. It's not as such a biblical, it is because the whole of the Bible is about spending time with God. The reason Israel, the Jewish people, stepped away from God, is because they didn't spend time with him, focused on him. The reason a lot of the disciples walked away from Jesus after a while, is they really didn't realise what it meant, because they didn't spend enough time really listening to him. We should be glad to want to be with Jesus. Find a spare place that you can go and be with Jesus. I got challenged a year ago. I was at a conference. And one of the things the guy turned around about, he was talking about a book, an American book, and I know we can't all do this, but he talked about, he said, where is your log cabin or your wood shed? Where is the place that you go to to spend time with God? With no distractions, if you can. Now, not all of us have got a spare room or a spare shed or a spare attic. But, but there is places that maybe we can go to go and spend time with God to get rid of the distractions. I would humbly suggest. So, encountering Jesus in 2020. Having a clearer vision 
this year of him and who we are in him. Believe it or not, takes effort from us. So I would like to challenge you, that's it, done, because this is enough for today. Do a timesheet of where you spend your time. Anybody willing to do that? I have to do a timesheet every week anyway here. It's amazing how my evenings when I'm not working, they're not on there. I, 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 I've got to do a timesheet for my own time spent. And we all have family, we, we, we have normal life, I get that. But I bet if we did a proper timesheet, we'd realize how much time we didn't, we could easily carve out and say, actually, I don't need to do that today. I can spend time encountering Jesus. I should be glad to spend time with my Lord. Glad with the Lord who says, I am also your friend. I won't say, go on, you're going to give it a try then and expect a whole load of shout back, yes. I'll leave the Holy Spirit to talk to you about that. But bow your heads, let's spend some time being glad in his presence right now. Talk to him for yourself. I'm going to say two prayers. One is from the 12th century. Thanks be to thee, my Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits thou hast given me, for all the pains and insults thou hast borne for me. O most, o most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, May I know thee more clearly, love thee more dearly, and follow thee more nearly, day by day. Amen. And then to give a slightly more popular version of this that apparently comes from a 1970s musical, it's just as equally a good prayer. Day by day, dear Lord, I pray, to see you more clearly, love you more dearly, follow you more nearly, day by day. We do hope you've enjoyed and benefited from this presentation. To learn more about what the Bible teaches us and how to apply this to our everyday lives, check out our biblical teaching videos at gbcweb.tv.